paying a Python engineer is a dream job today. It pays well for new junior level developers with an average starting salary of 92,000 per year. I tell you what, you show me a pay stuff for $72,000 on it, I quit my job right now and I work for you. You can often work from home and this job has a huge potential. But can you really become a Python engineer by yourself? And my answer is yes. Is it easy? Maybe not. Ha! I knew it! But if you are smart enough and don't waste time, you can get your first job even in six months, based on my experience. I believe that spending endless hours of studying and playing six figures for college classes is not the best way to becoming a Python engineer. Oh, no, no. That's why today I want to discuss the quickest way to become a Python programmer and how to really get a full-time job in just six months. Yes, it can be done, I have seen many cases like this. In this video I will also explain how to avoid the main mistakes that many beginners make on their way to becoming a Python engineer. Because avoiding mistakes can save you a lot of time while learning. Let's go! Why Python is the best for beginners? We have a deadline, six months. So we should focus on five important things here. This programming language should have a really high demand. For us, it means this language should have many job opportunities. Next, strong community. The programming language must have a big developer's community for easy knowledge sharing and fast problem solving. Simplicity, we need a language that is easy to learn and with intuitive syntax. Next point, verbosity. Programming language should be verbose. We don't have time to write hundreds of lines of code for simple tasks. Rich ecosystem. This language ought to have a big collection of libraries and tools, making it easy to develop almost any type of application. And one of the best choices here is Python, because it meets all these five things. If you want to learn coding and get a job fast, Python is a really great option. It is easy to write and can be used for almost any task, from simple scripting to large-scale projects. Trust me, the the ability to write complex tasks with fewer lines of code is really helpful for the learning process. And also during coding interviews where you have only 45 minutes to solve a problem. Python can be used in many fields, like web development, game development, data science, blockchain, machine learning and even artificial intelligence. Yeah, it offers many opportunities. That's why I'm suggesting you to start with Python. Again, our main goal is to learn enough to get a first job in 4 months. After that we can focus on career growth and the next steps. But this is topic for another video. How to learn Python? Ok, let's discuss how to properly learn Python. And this is where most beginner programmers make their first big mistake. And I'm talking about overthinking. Today many beginner programmers spend too much time watching YouTube videos from YouTubers who promote their own courses, or just simply browsing websites trying to find the best programming course for beginners. Instead of wasting time on this, it's better to dedicate that time to actually learning, not browsing. Simply type Python course for beginners on YouTube. Immediately you can find here a lot of good and free courses. Or you can go to Udemy and search for the same thing. Filter beginner level courses, then choose with an excellent review rating and just pick a highly rated course. I also recommend looking at the course description, but make sure it has hands-on exercises. By following this approach you can quickly learn without delays and procrastination. The next mistake I often see is learning by watching instead of doing. I mean, don't watch your programming course like a favorite TV show on Netflix, or it will waste your time. Remember, every hour of watching content should be translated into actual coding. And by that I mean start building your skills right away. Sometimes you might need to pause, rewind, rewatch and search online. In my experience learning by doing works much better. Because it mixes theory and practice, making learning much more productive. The next important thing is to keep your motivation high while learning. Just do it! Make your dreams come true! It's crucial for beginners to pick courses with projects that truly interest them. If you have fun creating games, password generator or simply crypto apps, just pick this project to learn. This way you are more likely to complete the course. Aim to have fun while coding and the learning process itself. Also, try to choose courses with real-world projects, as they will help with future job interviews. Participating in hackathons Hackathons are a great way to gain valuable experience and that can really assist you in getting your first job. After finishing a couple or more courses, you already have some experience. But of course, this is not enough. Now it's a good time to look for more projects, or at least close to that. 
And that's why I strongly recommend joining your first hackathon at this stage. If you're not familiar, a hackathon is an event where people quickly work together on engineering tasks for a short period of time, usually between 24 and 48 hours. So why you should participate in hackathon? First, hackathons let you work in teams and cooperate with other developers and designers. Second, hackathons often focus on real-world projects, helping you improve your skills and show off your problem-solving abilities. All employers value practical experience and hackathons can help with that. Third, taking part in hackathons can help you build your network and meet more experienced developers. Sometimes at these events you can also find a mentor who can help you grow even faster. Guys, participating in hackathons is a fantastic experience, especially for beginners. This is a way to show your ability to work in a team and solve complex problems. Remember, pick hackathons with projects you would really enjoy making. So, how to build your skill? As you get better at Python and feel excited about your first several projects, remember, this is just the start. Keep building your skills by trying and trying different kinds of tasks. As I said earlier, knowing theory alone isn't enough. You need to practice coding. And you can use websites like LeetCode or CodeWars. You ask, why are these platforms helpful? First, they have many coding questions from easy to hard levels, like the ones real tech companies ask. Second, they have an automated test runner, allowing you to run numerous tests on your code, just to make sure it's correct. That's why I highly suggest using these platforms and trying to solve one or two questions per day. Begin with simple level questions and allocate one hour each day. Make sure to spend time consistently on this. If you are stuck, you can look up a solution, but make sure to fully understand it. Once you do, find similar questions and practice more until you feel confident. Because as a software engineer, you write a lot of code, including buggy code, which you then debug and have to fix. And this is what software engineers usually do in real job. As soon as you feel comfortable with easy level questions, move on to medium level to further improve your skills. Believe me, this method can rapidly boost your coding knowledge and experience. Once you are confident with medium level questions, avoid getting stuck at this stage like many beginners do, because it's time to work on another crucial skill. And I am talking about the art of interviewing. Interview skills. Yes, one more big mistake new programmers often make is not knowing when to stop practicing and start interviewing. <sighs> the truth is, interview experience matters as much as practicing tasks and learning theory. So start uploading your projects to platforms like GitHub or GitLab to create a strong coding portfolio. Next, create a well-prepared resume that includes a link to your profile. And after this, set a goal to attend 10 or more interviews with companies you are not to worry about. The reason for this is that you will likely fail your first interviews. And yes, if you don't succeed on interview, don't be upset. The main purpose at this point is to learn from the experience. The reality for most beginners is that the recruitment journey is filled with ups and downs. Sometimes you will see questions you have seen before or can solve easily with a basic pattern match. Other times you might be stumped, sweating and demotivated after spending 30 minutes with no idea of a solution at all. And this is entirely normal at this stage. Don't blame yourself. <laughs> If a question confuses you during an interview, search for it online later, learn about it and practice at home to be ready for next time. Also, from my experience, tech companies often ask specific theoretical questions during interviews that may not be relevant in real-life work situations. However, it's still a good idea to learn and practice these topics as well. Otherwise, you could get stuck again when you see similar questions in your next interview. But soon you will notice you are improving with every interview you go. That's why it's a key to do many interviews, since developing these skills will help you to get a real job quicker. The last and one of the most significant mistakes I often see beginners make is giving up too soon. By that I mean they start to believe that their poor interview results or struggles with coding will last forever and they will never be able to overcome them. In addition, when they see someone who spent 5 years on CS college degree, they first saw this, I cannot beat these guys. They are smarter than me and I could never achieve their level. It's important to stop thinking this way. Because it's natural to experience doubts and sometimes feel like an imposter. But it's important to remember that these feelings will go away soon. And you should keep going forward. I don't stop. 
stay confident, maintain a strong mindset, and keep practicing coding and attending interviews. Learn from your mistakes, reflect on what you could have done better, and then practice the same problem at home until you fully understand the solution. Because in time, by being persistent and consistent, you will find that you've passed your first interview. And this will be the moment when all your hard work pay offs. Think about it. And until next time.